It was a spark of protest that started as a hunger strike but soon spread like wildfire and shook the British colonial establishment to the core. But the 1946 Royal Indian Naval Mutiny against the British in India remained a small footnote in history. The publisher of Roly Books and author Pramod Kapoor spent six years researching this event and the result is this book, 1946, The Last War of Independence. He tells us how he collected the pieces of this story. This story came to me quite by accident. Um, I, I was researching for a book, uh, a biography of Mahatma Gandhi. And uh, in the process, I, I speed read 100 volumes of collected works of Mahatma Gandhi. And when I reached, uh, I think it was volume 89, 90, I read about some letters that um, uh, Sardar Patel had written to Mahatma Gandhi saying that I have asked Jawaharlal not to come to Bombay to, to meet these young naval ratings, uh, but yet he's coming, let him come, you know, we'll see. So that in, intrigued me that I thought, why, what are they, there must be something much more than, than what I was reading that uh, prompted Sardar Patel to write to Gandhi. But I, I just put a note in my mind and, and put it uh, you know, to, to elsewhere until my book on Gandhiji was complete. And then when that was done, I started to read more about it. And uh, there were just a couple of two or three books on the subject. Uh, primarily written by those who had participated in the mutiny. There were, one of them was a brilliantly written um, um, a biography of B.C. that the main protagonist who had started the, the, uh, the mutiny. And uh, I, uh, when I, the more I read, the more I got involved into it. And I said, I thought it needs, uh, you know, much more uh, thorough investigation. And, and then it went on for almost six, seven years then I, uh, I thought I must collect the last paper which exists on this on the subject, went all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, most of the things that were not available in India, the documents that were not available in India, and surprisingly, uh, from February 18, 1946 to February 26, 1946, those eight days, newspapers, uh, main newspapers were missing. From their own, I like Free Press Journal was the most vocal newspaper of the time. I went to their archive, I went to Nehru Memorial, everywhere I couldn't find them. I think they were deliberately, this is my suspicion, that they were deliberately removed because there were all other newspapers except those six days. So, but I was lucky that three years later, I found them in uh, National Maritime Museum in Greenwich in London. And uh, yeah, so I, there, was, there was something that, that the, uh, the, the uh, uh, that the Congress and the Muslim League, uh, who, uh, who was in negotiation with the British, they wanted to hide it for some reason. Mm -hmm. And that is how uh, it all began. And uh, well, the journey was long, as I said, seven years, and I kept at it. The naval mutiny started on 18th February 1946 and was led by a group of young ratings or sailors who were just 14 to 25 years old. The seeds of the mutiny were sown much before. I think uh, the seeds of the mutiny were sown on the very day that these young boys were recruited. Uh, mm -hmm. This was in 1939, when the World War uh, II had just started. And there was a massive mobilization of, of armed forces uh, to, to recruit new people. To do that, the Britishers put out um, very promising advertisements a very, uh, uh, you know, to lure the parents into sending their young kids for uh, um, to, to the to, to Navy and Army and Air Force, uh, promising them something that probably uh, they they were not they would have been very difficult to keep. So they within a month of their joining in 1939, these young youngsters realized that this was nothing close to what they have they have been promised. There was. Um, racial discrimination, uh, the, the whites were treated differently of the same, uh, you know, age and, 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 and rank. And then you had the, uh, if, if, there was a, a, if there was a room for a barrack for 10 people, there were 20 people squeezed in, living condition 
was awful. The, the food was uh, terrible. Uh, the, the Muslims were given, uh, you know, non-halal meat. The, the, sometimes the, the vegetarian Hindus were given meat and said, there's, well, you can remove the, the meat, but you have to have the, the curry, you know, the gravy. And that sort of thing that was, had upset them and they, they wrote letters to their parents, etc. But they were very unhappy with it. And, but yet they continued with it because they had left home. Some of them were well-to-do, some of them were not so well-to-do. They were mostly came from peasants' background. And, and, and they, yet, yet they continued. And so they continued and they, they fought valiantly in, in World War II. They, they saved uh, a lot of uh, British or, or the uh, Royal Indian Navy ships. They, were, they excelled themselves in, in uh, battles. They were rewarded, they were awarded, uh, but yet in then, but the discontentment was growing from the day they joined the force. In, in 1942, when uh, Congress gave the call for, um, uh, for uh, uh, Quit India movement, the, on, on the 8th of August, uh, the, on, on the 9th, most of the top leaders were leadership was arrested. However, the younger ones like Aruna Asaf Ali, Biju Patnaik, uh, uh, Patwardhan, etc. They all went underground, mm -hmm. and uh, they they uh, from from uh, underground they started to uh, to to produce ra uh, Congress radio and and you know producing uh, uh, what they call the the literature which was uh, against British etc. All this was not uh, didn't leave these people. I mean, they they were privy to some of these things when. On Sundays, when they had liberty time, they would go to the shore. They would read some of the, these newspapers. Mm -hmm. Around the same time, uh, a little later, I would say in 1945, uh, the British put uh, the INA uh, officers on, on trial and an open public trial in Redford. This is when um, uh, Shahnawaz Khan, the uh, uh, Dillon, and Prem Sagal were put on uh, a Hindu, a Muslim, and a Sikh were put on trial at the same time. Sure. This, uh, this uh, incensed these young ratings much more. And they, they decided that some, it was time for them to do something as well. Uh, at, at the same time, the, the, the society around them, the families around them would say that, look at INA. They are fighting the same people who, whose salary you're living in, you know, you're living with. And, you, and all this was a bit humiliating for them. And they thought they, they ought to have, to have a role to play in uh, in the freedom movement, that is when uh, when the the, the uh, on the first of December 1945, the, the uh, navy was was first for the first time celebrating Navy Day when they had in, invited all of Bombay, you know, the who's who of Bombay and gentry to come and have uh, you know look at the pomp and the show, etc. At that night. Uh, B.C. Dutt and R.D. Puri, the two people who started the mutiny uh, uh, or started the process, uh, so to say, they, paint, they painted the walls with all these uh, seditious slogans like uh, kill the British, down with the British, quit India, etc. They were not caught because it happened in the night, but in the morning, it was a huge embarrassment for, for, for the Britishers. For and for the for, for the forces, they they just uh, issued a public warning, but they couldn't uh, point point at the people who had actually done this. Mm -hmm. uh, they repeated this because encouraged by this, they repeated this about a month later again in January. This time, in their towards I think it was the it was the uh, second week of January that this time the BC that was caught with a with a gum bottle in his hand where. Uh, he had used these, the, the gum to, uh, to paste these uh, posters on, on the walls of uh, I, uh, HMIS Talwar, which was the signal school, which is where the, the, uh, the mutiny had begun. And he was caught, his, his uh, locker was opened, and all kinds of, of uh, anti-British uh, uh, literature was, was discovered. He was put into, into jail. Uh, into uh, the internal uh, navy, navy jail, but this encouraged the others to to be a little um, uh, more bolder. The CEO, the commanding officer of Talwar, was changed because the uh, the, uh, the authorities thought that he was too lenient, and th therefore all this has happened. 
a, a new man, a commander king was sent in, who was a foul mouth, big uh, as 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 BC that uh, uh, you know described him that he was a big man with a small, very small brain, and he when he came, he started to 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 abuse them and you know and and, and you know lost it at that time. They they decided to strike work, and they they made a complaint against him. But that complaint had the process of being heard, etc. On the seventeenth night, when the, when the similar kind of uh, you know bad food, unpalatable food was served to them, they decided enough was enough, and that night they didn't eat. The next morning, eighteenth of February, when the when the uh, uh, when the mutiny began. They just uh, in the morning about 10, 15 of them got up and said uh, in, that no, no food, no work. The news of the mutiny spread fast. All the major British port cities like Calcutta, Karachi, Madras, Vishakapatnam and many others saw unrest. At the height of the mutiny, the sailors in Mumbai even trained their guns at the Gateway of India and the Royal Yacht Club. Many believe that this was a last straw for the very shaken up British administration in India. Because they belong to Signal School, which was the second largest Signal School in the British uh, Navy, Naval Establishment, uh, in no time when they struck work, they, they made, uh, you know, sent signals to all the uh, ships around and all the sure establishment. Uh, within no time, within within I think uh, twelve hours or ten hours, uh, uh, almost seventy eight uh, ships uh, from from uh, from uh, uh, as far off as as Eden and in Karachi and Vishakapatnam and Cal Cal Calcutta, the news had spread, and um, there were twenty one shore establishments. They they all heard this this news. Uh, most of them struck work and in solidarity. And right. some it, within 24 hours, some 20,000 sailors went on strike, thus really crippling the uh, the the navy, the British navy. It started on the 18th of Feb uh, February, and as I said, within no time, it spread to all these centers and ships and mm -hmm. and, and 20,000 uh, sailors. Uh, the British got, uh, you know, uh, were really shaken up. There were there were cables flying from Delhi to Westminster in you know in, in London. The prime there was uh, you know the the complaint between the prime minister's office and vice president's office saying that this was so important you should have marked it a top priority and top urgent and you didn't mark it. You know that kind of argument was going going on. They were they were really shaken up. That on the 18th itself uh, in and House of Commons and House of Lords. The British Prime Minister Attlee uh, made an announcement that uh, a cabinet mission will will leave for India shortly to discuss the transfer modality of the transfer of power. To that extent, they were they were shaken up. Mm -hmm. Then the next day, it became a little more tense because both sides were preparing, uh, were, were actually talking, but preparing uh, behind the scene for a possible uh, conflict, uh, uh, which could be. Um, uh, a conflict, armed con conflict. So the armories were broken up. The, the these ratings took charge of the arms, etc. On the twentieth, there was actually four hours of, of firing in Castle Barrack, which was in the in the center, which is now the a part of INS Angre in in in, in Bombay, and there was firing for four hours. So much so that the the uh, Admiral Godfrey, who was the head of Navy in India, he made an announcement on All India Radio, broadcasted by, by BBC, that look, if it comes to uh, you know, uh, we will we are ready to to destroy the the Navy, uh, but we will not bear this kind of discipline, we uh, indiscipline, and uh, and this was mostly to threaten. Then also at the same time they actually uh, called for the biggest warship, which was stationed in Trincomalee in, in, in Sri Lanka or Ceylon at the time to rapidly move towards Bombay to scare these people because both sides were hearing the signals that were going out from each other. Um, sure. At the same time, the, there were low sorties on, on Gateway of India just to scare these boys. And these boys were so defined, they, they thought they, they, they knew that they had the British by the scuff of their neck, you know, so they, 
they pointed the guns out, uh, from the ships towards yacht club towards gateway of of india towards taj mahal hotel and said that if any harm comes to us we will blow blow all these buildings so it had really come to that kind of kind of situation yeah. at that point of time the the politicians came in uh, the support from the public was was huge from especially in in bombay in in karachi already there was a, a a big fight between uh, between the ship the hindustan and the shore where the where the britishers were so it was it has really escalated and uh, it was it, it, that is the time when the politicians thought that they must step in and and before it, be, it explodes into uh, into much much bigger thing Given the support the sailors were getting from the locals of port cities like Bombay, the British administration called in Indian political leaders like Sardar Patel and Muhammad Ali Jinnah to intervene. Meanwhile, freedom fighter Aruna Asif Ali, who was supporting the mutiny, wrote to Jawaharlal Nehru, who agreed to intervene on behalf of the sailors. There were discussions going on, and uh, both the political parties, whether it was Muslim League. Uh, Jinnah or Sardar Patel and Nehru ji from uh, from Congress want, wanted to resolve this to get independence by discussion and 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 cooperation. They did not want any bloodshed. In any case, Gandhi ji would never compromise with with uh, with violence. Or, uh, and therefore, it was not Nehru versus Patel so much, but it was Gandhi ji who was who was really the dictator of Congress at the time. You know. and uh, whatever he said was carried out by by congress because his role in the freedom movement was huge and he, he was uh, you know he was like god to pe- people and therefore uh, he was the uh, sardar patel was carrying out i think the wish, wishes of mahatma gandhi nehru ji because he was one among the young younger uh, generation who was more leftist in his thinking like aruna asaf ali like achyut patwardhan like biju patnaik uh, he uh, but he knew that he had a role to play and he was a part of the discussion that was going on with the british so he also was was in between i mean he he uh, one side there was public support for for these ratings and nobody wanted to really uh, upset the public you know public mood yet there on the other side there was uh independence which which seemed imminent and they didn't want to jeopardize that either so the more responsible so to say responsible leaders uh, thought that it is wise on their part to to make sure that these they surrender uh the these ratings surrender unconditionally they yeah. promised them now the they, they promised them that no victimization will take place if they surrendered uh, unconditionally that all night on the 24 on the 23rd night the these ratings met they uh, you know they were shouting the uh, thing among themselves there was one side was saying you know it's, it's best that that we we surrender on the other side they said we never went into the war thinking that we will survive we always went into the war to 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 uh, to to win the war and therefore we will not even if we get killed in the process we will we will keep uh, fighting and but in just few minutes three minutes before the uh, deadline that was given to them which was 6:15 on the 24th 6:15 in the morning they actually wept like children hugged each other and and decided to surrender just because the uh, the politicians had told them that they they'll make sure that none of them will be victimized but this was a promise they made that they knew they could not keep because they were not capable of keeping the, the the promise sadly while the sailors had been promised that no action would be taken against them they were sent to prison even though the support that the sailors got from locals in bombay and other port cities was commendable it was not enough well even when when they were they were being asked to surrender uh, you know the, the uh, there was a huge public support uh, the communist were with them and communists give call to all the mill workers the students the transport workers of bombay who all came in lakhs to on the street so much so that that the british had to bring them bring their tanks on the street of bombay and they were they were massive firing uh, uh, 
uh, and uh, some, something like the official figure is about four to 500 were killed in two days and 1500 injured. But uh, these are the official figures. We don't know. I mean, we, we, we have, I have read the description which says that not an inch was available in the hospital where, the, where they were being treated. So a huge amount of public support uh, came, came, uh, happened. But um, uh, we, when, they, when they surrendered, and they surrendered on the, on the uh, promise given by the, by the politician that they will not be victimized, yet within 48 hours, they were all rounded up taken to a concentration camp-like situation in, in Mulund. And uh, then from there, about some hundred odd uh, uh, ringleaders were moved to Kalyan, which is in worse living condition. And after that, a summary trial of some sort, where they were, they were some, most of them were let out, but given they were taken to the railway station, given one way ticket to their hometown and said, never show your face again in Bombay. That was the end of end of those people. Worse is that when we got independence, both Pakistan and India, none of them were taken back into, in, into the force. They even said that they will work for half the salary for the independent uh, uh, nation, you know, for India, for independent India. But no, they they in return got a two-line letter saying that the government of India has decided that those who were uh, demobbed, uh, de demobilized, will not be taken in, and those who were discharged with disgrace will not even be eligible for civil uh, jobs. Now, this is not explainable. That, uh, and this was this was mentioned by both uh, Jinnah and Patel, Sadar Patel, that that we, after all, we want discipline in the army, armed forces of the independent India and Pakistan as well. But um, there was also the case that till 1958, we had four uh, admirals, Navy chiefs who were Britishers. So therefore they couldn't have, it would, it would have been uncomfortable for them to re-employ these people who had rebelled against the same officers who were then in, 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 the, in, the, uh, in the British Navy, in the Royal Indian Navy. That, that uh, uh, plus, I, they, I, I mean, this is just a conjecture. These are just interpretation of, of what I've read. There's also the fact that they did not want the, the, uh, the effort and the valiant effort of these youngsters to be glorified and to take away any credit of, of independence that could have gone to them. Uh, I mean, there are various, I mean, this could be the weaker, the, also the fact that uh, the, the communists uh, would have figured much more prominently in the history in history, as they are now, as as uh, as as a party that actually helped in independence. So there were various various reasons. How the sailors were treated and why the naval mutiny of 1946 became a footnote in history are questions that remain unanswered. Was this mutiny seen as insubordination and a case of indiscipline? Were the sailors forgotten because there was so much else happening as India was inching closer to independence? Did the Congress leadership underplay it because the communists were supporting the sailors? Unfortunately, we may never know. Thankfully, in Mumbai, a city that had supported the sailors who led the naval mutiny, there is a commemoration of them in the form of this memorial in Kolaba. However, this is just a small gesture.